I mean, the story of 1001 is uh, Inez, we first meet her, she's coming out of Rikers, and she reconnects with her young son Terry, who's in the foster care system. Um, but at the risk of losing him again, she just decides to impulsively abduct him. And so you see them rebuild their life together, just hiding in plain sight in a New York City that's changing around them rapidly. Uh, what inspired it for me was, was two big things. I, I wanted to address gentrification and what I was seeing firsthand in New York City and how that was, how it seemed to be targeting Black communities specifically. Um, and, and I felt like thinking about characters, people in real life, like my characters in the movie, Terry and Inez, uh, just seeing firsthand how they fought over generations just to get that level of stability uh, and access to the American dream. And so it's for gentrification to come be a new obstacle that knocks them down again. To me, I was like, that's that's so devastating. And, and what was also devastating is to see a neighborhood like Harlem uh, that means something not only to New Yorkers, uh, but to black identity and heritage and to American history, seeing that being erased. Uh, so that was a big thing for me. And the last big thing was just wanting to honor uh, black women, specifically inner city and underprivileged black women. Uh, I wanted them to feel seen and heard, and I wanted to use Inez's journey to present the question of who stands up and who, who fights for us because she spends the whole movie fighting for everybody else. I know you guys had a relationship prior to this, but was it, did you have this, did you already have this written or was it just a pitch idea? So how did you present it to her, whether it was like already written out? You know, actually, I think the way we first started working together, I mean, I had created this short, uh, I directed a short called Feathers, and, and Lena saw that, uh, as well as her producing partner, Rishi Rajani, and, and, and the other producers on the film uh, at Sight Unseen and Make Ready. And it was actually that that we came together, or they came together, uh, and approached me to support me in making my first feature. So I really only had a kernel of an idea. I knew I wanted to tell a story that acknowledged and said farewell to my coming of age experience in New York. But I think we actually took this whole journey together, developing it, and they were there and so supportive and helping me just find the movie that I and finding the story that I wanted to tell and going through that whole process that took took a while. <laughs> What was it about either AV or just the idea that made you say, you know what, I'm going to get behind this? I think the, it was honestly both. It was, it was okay, you know, I trust AV's vision and I also really like these themes, but I was also curious to know how it was going to come together. I thought to myself, how, okay, cool, all right, I'm curious to see how this uh, sort of pans out. And we did table reads and workshopped at a ton. So we, that first, that very first table read we did, I remember that, to the another table read we did, there was so much growth and, and, I got the second table read we did, which we at that point kind of had our cast. I was pretty yeah. much most of the cast mm -hmm. when we did the final table read uh, over Zoom, obviously, like everything else. And I was um, I was a wreck at the end of that table read. And I think that showed me, and maybe because the journey had been long or because I had sort of gotten to know AV as a person beyond the artist element of it, I just was very moved and thrown. And I'll never forget that table read. And so it's been really beautiful to also see the movie and to see it all come together uh, because people are feeling that thing that I remember feeling. Uh, and um, that's exciting. Yeah. And when did Tiana Taylor become the name? Like she's she's the lead, she's Inez. But when did the discussions around Tiana mm -hmm. and Inez uh, come about? You know, I mean, I think her name had lightly come up early on uh, as we were trying to figure out who could be who could be Inez. Uh, but I, I, I didn't really feel like I had anything to go on. I just, I, I didn't know, I didn't see a lot of her on screen that was showing me her range. And Inez was a very challenging character. And I was like, oh, it's, I don't want to be, you know, I felt like it would be corny just to, you know, pull her because she's from Harlem or pull her because she's a New York City girl. I like, I wanted to know she had the full, the full picture. So, I mean, I was like, I'm open to it, but as of right now, I just don't have enough. And so I just continued looking through a large volume of actresses and so many women, whether they were super known or experienced or just first time out, everybody read for the role and Tiana was just among those tapes. But I, by the time that I did see her, I could see what did really stand out for about, about her in a special way. And that was that she did have the depth and the talent and the pedigree to take on this role. Even in those first readings, I could feel it. I could feel how much she understood this woman because either she was her or she knew her. Um, and so I knew she would, she would rendered this character with a sense of empathy uh, and dignify her and and and, and compassion. Uh, and in, in addition to honoring all of her complexities, because Inez, you see the full ranges of emotions of a human being in that one performance. And, and I think Tiana, she had it all there. She gave me the truth uh, of what I was looking for in this human being, especially for this inner city, the city, city black woman. Uh -huh. For sure. 
And this one's for Lena. Uh, like you said, Rishi introduced you to AB's short feathers, and then you brought her on to direct an episode oh. of her Boomerang, and then now you're behind her feature debut. Talk to me about nurturing artists and their projects versus nurturing your own. Yeah, you know, I think that's such a tricky thing for me. And I think I'm, I, it's a case by case. I mean, I think every director is different and requires different things. Like, you know, AV, you know, may need me in different ways than Rada Blank does. Or Justin Simeon may need me in different ways than Rada does. And so I have to, I think, figure out, okay, how do you need me to show up for you? <laughs> like, what's the best way for me to do that? And then when you're asking for thoughts or advice or, you know, I need to make sure I'm giving advice that's good for, for you and for the situation and not necessarily what I would do. Um, and because in my own situations, I do have to sort of, but I'm bouncing things off of Rishi. I'm like saying, hey, I have this issue, but how do you think I should handle it? And we can do that. And and I am that I'm a sounding board for your AV or during the situation was like, I'm struggling with this. How do I, how do I deal with this? I'm like, okay, let's talk about it. What if we do this? Or maybe we can figure this out. Cause it really is about keeping everybody in a calm space. Oh, that sounds crazy. So they could, so they can do their best work. And it's hard to be calm on the set because you're always running out of time. You always want more. You're always running out of things. But I always want these artists to be focused on their vision because if they could execute that, everything will be fine. So that's really the biggest difference. Yeah, for sure. And AV, you said that Lena was just one call away, whether it be for feedback and she was super transparent and direct with you. Is there any conversation that you can recall that you was like, OK, this is this also made it into the film, but something that also taught you something as a creator? I don't know. I mean, I think maybe we we talked, uh, uh, I mean, you know, we talked at length about the decision to, to cast Tiana, which was a leap of faith and obviously a very, very wonderful decision I'm grateful for. <laughs> uh, but but I think even in that, that, that collaboration, I think Tiana, she's a little bit different because uh, here she is, she's a new actress. Uh, in many ways, just in terms of her being a, lead, a leading lady. So you have that, just somebody who's getting used to the process of being so committed to a role and the level of, uh, you know, what comes with that. Yeah, uh, yeah the level of responsibility. Uh, but I think also the fact that she still is a celebrity, she still is a musician, she still has this very full life. Still a mom. Uh, yeah, still a mom, you know, and a wife. You know, so she still has so much going on. And I think trying to find the right balance to not only uh, make sure that I'm giving her what she wants, but also honoring the ways that you need to adapt. I mean, I think in collaboration, you need to everybody kind of needs to adapt to each other to figure out the right rhythms and ways to work together. And I think Lena was a, a, a really great, uh, she's really great at that in general. And she was great in making sure that I kept that in mind as well and making sure that I created a space, the best uh, space for collaboration for me and Tiana uh, and making sure that I was understanding of like, okay, based off her, her particular needs, both as an actress and just as like somebody who's taking on a, a new role and, and juggling so many things, that I could be the best supportive system, support system for her. <laughs> you got it. And, and and be able to help her navigating, knowing that she has so much that she's juggling all at once. Yeah. You know, I'm really so proud of proud of Tiana, and 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 I feel like it, it was a testament to that collaboration that we had. I mean, I think I really did try to push her and challenge her in new ways, um, and I'm so happy that she was receptive. Uh, a lot of what we talked about now is. The way we, you know, I mean, like, I felt like in the writing, I constructed this character. But then I had to break her all down again so that I could hand that over to, to Tiana and give her all the tools she needed to prepare uh, and, and create a shorthand between us that would be helpful to her to also access all the different layers to this very complicated character. And I think all of that work we did, all those conversations, it shows up on screen. Um, and I always really pushed her, uh, especially during the most challenging moments of the character, to pull from herself, pull from all of her life experience, because I feel like she has so much to give to the character, even if they have a different life story. Um, and I think all of it, the way she showed up for the character and the way that she showed up for herself, um, the really the way she really honored this story that I wanted to tell, I'm just so proud of. And, and I know she is too. She watches the movie all the time. I, I'm like, <laughs> I can't watch it. I know, we learned about that. Yeah, but, but she, you know, I know she she loves it and, and she's very proud of what she did and she should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm honestly blown away. I've obviously seen it a bunch. But when I sit through these screenings, like at the premiere and Sundance, I enjoy it. I enjoy watching it. And I think that's a huge testament to AV's vision, to their collaboration. And it really is just a joyful thing to see, even though she is grappling with pain and struggle and she's frustrated, but there's a joy that comes out of her that just glows. And I think I, it's, I love watching AV and Tiana together because in essence, Tiana is interpreting what AB is has given her, and I think it's it's, it's like watching a singer um, sing a song written by somebody, 
and it's made for them to sing. And that beautiful chemistry just brings about magic. And I think that's what it's like watching this movie, her performance. And uh, Lena, you know, I think that there's something to, you're very invested in growing people, especially the people that you've worked with before. Is it easier to okay. give feedback to people that you already have already, that you've already developed relationships with? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the conversations like we're having are not light. They're not, not vulnerable. So we're talking, because you're dealing with a very personal piece. As I continue to, to listen to table reads, read the drafts, like look at audition piece tapes, I'm aware that this is, this is her heart in her, you know, in her hands. And so I want to be, I want to handle that with care as well. Um, but also be mindful about making sure, okay, now let me step out of my body and be an audience member. What, is, what am I not understanding? What is bumping me? And then also it's about my bar. You know, I, I do want to set a high bar and, and make sure that, you know, if you're going to come and this is going to have Hillman grad on it and as well as make ready and as well as sight unseen, we want to make sure this is a part of our, our legacy as well. And so, but the great thing is, is like AV is so focused on making sure it's right. I was talking about this a little bit last night. She doesn't want to get anything. It shouldn't feel false anywhere. And she succeeded in that. And, and I think that's, but th that's because we don't have false conversations. And so we get to know each other through this process. And, and that's why everybody's gotta be in an open space, a very vulnerable space. And so we have to be very careful about that space. You know, when you come onto that set or you walk into a creative conversation. Absolutely. I will always remember uh, in an interview, you said uh, the mention of Troy, that stuck with me. Your, um, I don't know, if, you know, I don't know if you remember, I'm sure you do, cause you said it's one of your favorite movies, but the boy, um, you know, being scared to go out to fight. Yeah, no, no, it's Troy, Brad Pitt. Yeah, the kid, he says, he says, he's like, um, you know, he says, well, you, why, why don't you go fight this, this, this big, you know, person they want me to fight? He's like, no, I'm too afraid. And he said, and that's why no one will remember, will remember your name. And so it's really about people that aren't afraid to walk into that, that battle. And, um, and I think that's what it's like making a movie. It's like, you, you really are setting yourself up and. But if you can survive it and you can live live to tell the story, you'll want to do it again. <laughs> She's like, uh, <laughs> give, me, give me some time in between and I'll get back at it. The reset time. Yeah, you got it. You're in the reset time now. <laughs> How are you enjoying this this role as uh, as a producer, as a person who nurtures um, new talent? And also, too, for AV, I will say, what does it feel like to have a person who's like on your right hand, a Black woman who's in your community, who gets it, who understands? and to be able to lean on um, someone right by your side, Lena first. You know, it feels very natural for me. And I think that's because I've been, you know, when I produced uh, along with Julie, you know, Justin Simeon's first feature, Dear White People, it, it well, again, it was, I was with a friend, you know, he's my homie, even though I'm pro helping produce this this movie, I, I learned then that you don't always have to know everything, but you gotta be willing to learn as you go. And you got to pay attention to what people around you need. And I think I've enjoyed that part of it, uh, being helpful. And I, because I, I think coming from the TV space, we don't do anything long. People sometimes see, oh, this is the creator. Okay. But there's a whole room of writers. There's a whole bunch of producers. There's a whole bunch of people that make it. And so I like being in the collaborative space, even in the film space, which I think maybe kind of, we've done, we've done TV together and film as well, but we like that. Okay. Let's huddle. Let's figure this out. And I get to be a, a, you know, a person in the huddle. That's how I think of myself when I'm a producer. I'm not in the center. I'm, I'm one of the people in the trenches trying to make sure we get out of this thing alive. And I think that to me is always exciting. I like being a part of a solution and, um, and, and trying to walk toward a similar goal. So I feel very comfortable in this role and it's exciting to watch people's dreams come true too. Not a bad view. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's really beautiful. I think I'm I'm so happy that as I'm making my way and, and rising up in, in my career, that I have somebody who's there who's so willing and committed to lifting me and, and helping me and being a support system. And especially as another woman, another Black woman, uh, I, I think it's just such a beautiful example of that. And, and and we even touch on that in a movie in certain ways, just the sisterhood uh, and how important it is to make sure that our sisterhood doesn't have any cracks, you know, any holes in it. Uh, and, and I think that that Lena is a shining example, not only in the way that she is a part of my journey, uh, but for me as well, you know, to I think for anybody who's coming up in this business, just to 
use their 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 platforms to pay it forward and bring other people with them. And also show them other sides. I think she's very public facing um, because she is an actress and because she is so many other things. She's a writer, she's a creator. But I think as a producer and as somebody who's part of the bigger picture of what it means to make and get these stories out, she's also reminding people that there's so many other world uh, roles uh, behind the camera and, and not just being a director and not just being a star in front of the camera. So I think uh, it, it's really such a pleasure, um, I think, and I'm so grateful for the ways that she's nurtured this project and also nurtured me along my journey.